guys, sorry I haven't done a video in a while, but like I said, my camera was kind of broken and I was having some technical issues going on. So what I wanted to talk about today was English and what specifically about English I wanted to talk about reference books. So I kind of have a couple for you guys here um, just so that we can go through them because not all, not all reference books are made the same. Some of them will attack different aspects of English and um, will help you out in different things. So um, these all basically have either MLA or grammatical references, and um, which is what you're really going to need. And I do have one that's about research papers, so it's a little bit more uh, more rounded out. So the first one that I wanted to talk about was uh, a writer's reference, Diana Hacker. So this book is great. This is like the jack of all trades. It has a little bit of everything. This is a really great reference book. Um, and you're probably going to encounter it a couple times. I know that it was required for one of my English classes. It's required for one of my writing history classes. It's required for my 100W class. Like, this book is going to, you're going to see it. So it's not um, something that you're just going to buy from one class and then never see again. So um, it looks like this. It's the fifth edition. It's brand new. This is actually my third copy. Um, just because it has this little binding in the pages. It's not like a real textbook, so, you know, if you love it and use it a lot, it's going to wear down. So, the only negative that I really can say about this book is that it's a little pricey. It's about 40 to $50. So, I would suggest going to Half.com, Amazon, something like that, and um, trying to purchase it there. So, with this book, you will get... Um, you will get document design, sentence style, word choice, grammatical sentences, uh, punctuation, mechanics, researching. You get an MLA section. And if you're in college and you don't know what MLA is, um, you're going to be introduced to it really soon and really fast. So you want to get comfortable with it. And it also has a small APA section which is for science or psychology majors, so you don't really have to worry about that. And then it has a mini grammatical section. And the other great thing about this book is that it has a website that you can go to and work through examples. So um, this one's really helpful if you need a refresher course, but this is going to be like your English Bible. So um, this is a really good investment. So the next one I want to talk talk about is the little brown book and mine looks like this it's green it's actually not brown it's second edition so it's really old but um, it still does the job so so the difference between this one and the Diana Hacker is that this is basically a grammar book you have let's go to it you have all of this of grammar and this is your mini MLA APA section so this one really talks about everything, you know, commas, punctuation, sentence fragments, word tense, uh, parts of speech, appropriate word choice, uh, how to declutter your sentences, so if your sentences are too wordy, um, how to really make them specific, because as much as they want you to be, um, to include figurative speech and illustrations in your sentences, um, they also want it to be clear and concise, which can be a bit confusing if you're not used to writing in that style. And then it has the MLA section back here, and this one gives you um, specific examples, and then it has an APA section in the back, which looks like that. So this book is great if your weakness is in grammar, um, if you struggle with punctuations, you have run-on, sentence fragments, slices, stuff like that. Although I will say that if you're taking English 1A or you're about to take English 1A, run-on and slices, um, you need to eliminate, eliminate those completely. Those are huge drawbacks um, once you're writing at college level. Um, what you should be having trouble with is content. That's what you should be kind of moving towards. So this is a great book if you know that that's your weakness and that's where you struggle. So the next one is a Writer's Choice Grammar to Improve Style. And this is mini, and I'm going to show you guys in comparison because this is basically the same thing as this, except it doesn't have an MLA section. But as you can see, this one's really sad compared to this one. So I would suggest something like this if you just need a refresher course. You just need something really quick just to, you know, spark up your mind. You're going to take a writing placement test. You're going to take, um, like, a WST, something like that. Um, you might want to just take a look. This has um, adverb clauses subordinate clauses, it kind of just goes through like a basic, 
just a basic overview of English in general. It doesn't go too much into specific and like commas and punctuation and stuff, but it really talks about sentence style, um, which is really great. Uh, another really good thing about this is that it has little uh, problems that you can work through, and I know sometimes it's easier to recognize things once you've worked on it a couple times, and that's usually when you take an English test, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be reading sentences, figuring out word toys, um, where does the comma go, are those subordinate clauses put together properly, stuff like that. So this is great if you're taking an English placement test and you just need a mini refresher. So the last one I wanted to show you guys is the Writing Great Research Papers. Um, this is the second edition, and this is actually a really good book. That's why I have it. Um, it teaches you how to craft, craft a thesis, research online, construct well-supported papers, covers MLA and APA. Um, so MLA and APA, like I said, you're going to see it quite a bit. So if you don't know what it is, look it up, please. Um, so this one kind of walks you through exactly how to write a paper. It tells you how to formulate your thesis, how to begin with a topic, how to um, come up with your body paragraphs. Um, it has, like, a doing the research section, and then when you flip the page, it has how can I find information I need, um, checklist of sources, so it tells you places where you can go and find uh, information, like here I have um, blogs, books, databases, dictionaries, ebooks, essays, governmental documents, index, interviews, magazines, stuff like that. Another great thing that I love about this book is that it shows you how to weed out um, resources that are not going to be reliable. Being on the internet and having a lot of stuff be online, some sources just will not be academically um, suitable, I guess is what I want to say. Some sources just would not be used in an academic paper just because they're not reliable. So this book kind of helps to weed out the ones that seem reliable, the ones that aren't. Um, where is it coming from? It really questions that. Like if something's being published, um, who's paying for it to be published? Is it skewed? Is it reliable information? Is it biased? Stuff like that. So this is great if you have a hard time writing a long paper or research paper. This will kind of walk you through it. And it also has example essays um, and outlines. So if you've never worked with an outline before or you're like, oh, I don't need them, for a long paper, you might need one, and this will walk you exactly through everything that you need to do. So this book is great. Um, so if you guys didn't catch the titles or anything, just don't worry. I'm going to link them in the bottom bar so you guys can take a look. And um, there's other books out there. These aren't the only ones, but as far as the Writing Great Research Papers, um, they have a Writing Great Research Papers and Thesis, and Writing a Thesis, Doctoral Thesis. That one's the one that I'm going to buy soon, so I'll show you guys when I get that one. And as far as writing, uh, Writer's Choice, Grammar to Improve Style, and the Little Brown Book, they have different variations of that. It can be done by a different company. You're pretty much going to get the same thing. But as far as the Diana Hacker, um, a lot of people use this book because it's like I said, it's just great all around. So if you purchase it, you're probably going to need it for school at one point or, or another. So like I said, even though it's a bit pricey, this one's a really good investment. So if you guys have any questions or anything like that, just let me know, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.